All right, man. Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah. Yahweh is the true name of the Most High God of Israel, uh, the Heavenly Father, the one true God. Ba'ashim, that is how you say in the name of Orthu. And Yahweh Shah is the true name of whom many come to know as Jesus Christ. His true name in the Hebrew, we know it is actually Yahweh Shah. So that we give in all praises, honor, and glorification unto them. And also Shalom, meaning peace, okay, unto the 12 tribes. <clears throat> that would be you so called. Black Hispanics and the Native Americans. Okay, those are the true Israelites today. All right, to you, we say peace. All right. Um, in this video, what I wanted to go over, okay, is this video I found on YouTube, right? And it's titled, Russia Joined by China and Iran, an Epic Military Drill Attended by Vladimir Putin. So guess what? You have these nations, all right, known as the kings of the East within the scriptures, if you read the book of Revelations, chapter 16, it talks about the kings of the east because these are the um the rulers, all right? The, these are the like the um you know like the top leaders of the eastern hemp eastern part of the hemisphere, right? Like Russia, China, Iran, Germany, uh North Korea, the EU. These are all considered the kings of the east. All right, and what they're doing right now is they're coming together doing military drills. Right. And what for is because they're going to actually they're, they're pretty much ready for World War Three. They're getting themselves ready. They're getting their military arsenal ready and they're getting their formations ready so that they can pretty much dominate World War Three. Right. Which in the Holy Scriptures, it is prophesied that they would come together and actually destroy America. That's all within Scripture. OK. And they're ultimately getting ready for the Battle of Armageddon. If you read the book of um Joel, even the book of Revelations, it tells you about the whole fight in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which that valley is located in the Middle East, right? And we'll get all that scriptures. We're we're we're, we're getting we're gonna get into all of that. But um, the thing is, hey, this this literally just happened last week, and I bet you it's not the first one, and it for sure will not be the last one. These are only gonna increase the uh, the military drills, the people attending these drills. It's only going to get bigger, man, right? And um, I want to read this in their little description before I play the video. It says, Last week, Russia and six other nations carried out a large-scale military exercise called Kavkaz 2020. Kavkaz 2020. I don't know if I said that right. But, um, hey, you got six other nations. I don't even, I didn't even know that. Which, obviously, these nations most likely are a part of the eu or the U european union you know so guess what man you got these nations they're getting ready man they're getting themselves ready for war that's why in the book of joel um i, I believe it's three and nine if i'm correct when it says prepare war um you know might as well look see if i can just bring it up i let me just go to joel chapter three I uh, right before i get into this i'm gonna just bring this scripture out Joel chapter 3, yeah, is 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Hey, so, hey, this is what's happening. All these scriptures are starting to speak, man. I, the Lord, said, Prepare war and let them draw near. So, all these mighty men of war, these nations are getting themselves ready for war. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play the video.
So hey man, <laughs> hey look look at that, you know these nations, hey they on one accord, and they doing they doing it, man. Hey, so uh, look, bro, at this point America is finished, man. <laughs> America's finished. America's itself is right now they're trying to recover from uh, the detrimentally damaged economy, right? Because of the COVID nineteen, so that's holding them back already, man. They're putting a lot of time into trying to trying to bring things back, right? You have all these riots happening, civil wars happening within this own nation. When you have bigger wars going on outside, but hey, America, America, man, it's falling apart with within. So you already have within and without. You got trouble, right? So the Most High has decreed that this place is is finished, man, right? And and also too, I have this um, article pulled up because this is more news, all right, concerning World War Three. Right, what's what's finna happen here soon? It says the U.S. slaps new sanctions on Iran as the U.N. arms embargo sets to expire. Right now, if you don't know what the arms embargo is, this is something that the United States and the Iranians they had an agreement, right, from the United Nations that they cannot buy or sell. Okay. Uh, uh, um, military missiles. Iran was prohibited from buying and selling and making um, nuclear weaponry. Right? This is this is what they had put on Iran. Anyways, let's just go and read it. Right? It says the ends of the ar arms embargo because I could cause Iran to turn toward Russia. The United Nations arms embargo on Iran is set to expire on Sunday. Despite repeated efforts by the United States to extend the uh, mor slakia, moratorium as part of the United States President Donald Trump's max maximum pressure strategy against slakia, <clears throat> against Tehran, right? So America is trying its hardest to extend this arms embargo, which you could almost say it's almost like a peace treaty. Okay, what, what we mean by that is just like, Really, Iran was prohibited, like I said, for, I believe, I forget when this actual arms embargo was set in place. I believe it was in 2011, but it's set to expire on October 18th. Right? I think the article is going to say that. And that's on Sunday. Right? Today, right now, it's October 12th. Uh, and October 18th is coming up real soon. So once this arms embargo is, once this arms embargo is up, guess what, man? Iran is now are they're able to now buy and sell military uh weaponry, man. They're now able to make nuclear weapons and they don't have the Americans over their shoulder trying to check what they do cuz it's not going to matter because they're they're, they're going to be able to be off of their it's almost like they're on probation and they're about to get off probation. You know that, that's the be, that's the best way you can put it. So guess what? This is a sad Sunday. When Iran gets off, hey, Russia and China are ready, man, with open arms to let these people buy all type of missiles, man. They're getting ready to sell them all type of fighter jets. They're finna help them develop all type of uh, 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 nuclear missiles. <laughs> hey, and this is coming quickly. Let me read on. America alone. The United States was determined to ensure Iran couldn't buy and sell weapons. At the end of the arms embargo began to loom in August, Washington tried to post push a resolution through the U.N. Security Council that would ex have extended it indefinitely. The resolution was imposed by China and Russia, while France, Germany, and the United Kingdom abstained from the vote, isolating the United States and highlighting its marginal position on Iran. So, really... What happened here was the United States was getting scared, man. All right, they was getting scared because this, this, this once their their arms embargo was up with Iran, they know that look, there's no stopping these damn, you know, Arabs from from, you know, starting some shit, pretty much, and they try to extend it, but China and Russia were right behind them, saying hell nah, we ain't finna help you out, and in Germany, France, and the UK, they didn't even help out. Because you're supposed to, I believe there's like nine votes, if I'm correct. There was like nine votes 
if everyone voted yes, then the United States would have been able to push the sanctions. But right off the bat, China and Russia said no. And these other nations, they didn't even vote. So that's why it's like America Day alone in this whole thing, man. America's trying to save itself. And these other nations are like, I don't, we ain't dealing with it, man. And you have a lot of the uh, China and Russia are like, we want it to happen. So this is going according to prophecy too in Obadiah when it says that they that are confederate, I mean that they that were at peace with thee, now they are confederate with thee because these nations are going to become confederate, meaning they're going to come against America and they're going to do it with one consent. All, right? All these nations are going to take down this horde with one consent, man, because they're tired of America, right? Um, Pretty much, yeah, I, that's all I want to bring out on that, man. But look, this is it, man. You have all these nations are coming up against this land, man, and they're they're getting ready to destroy it, right? Let's let's get that in the book of um Obadiah, since I've been already talking about it. Um, I'm gonna get this in the book of Obadiah, chapter one. There's only one chapter. Obadiah chapter one, and this is concerning Edom, right? It says, "Oh, uh, gonna start at six. How are the things that Esau searched out?" How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have lain a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. So the Most High said that all the men that were confederacy, all the men of thy confederacy, meaning the men who are at peace with thee, right? They have deceived thee. So they're going to become confederate against this land, America, Russia, China, Iran, as we see them doing drills together, um, Germany, North Korea, India, Pakistan. These are all people who are at peace with America, but they're going to come together on one accord so that they can destroy these Edomites here in America, man. Right. And this is prophecy. Right. This is prophecy because they are tired of this great whore. You think that these they don't know who they're dealing with? These when they go to these United Nation meetings, they know who the hell America is, how they get down, how that they're devils, and they're tired, man. They're tired of it. They're tired of America trying to be that that top bully on the block. Hey, the Lord's not letting that happen no more, man. Let's get this in the book of Joel. Right? Because the book of Joel, chapter three, prophesies pretty much about this whole thing, right? Let's go get Joel chapter 3 and 1. Behold in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. So the Most High says that the days are coming when the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem will be brought back, which is coming here swiftly. All right. This is concerning whenever the Israelites get redeemed out of the land of their captivity. Right. But before that happens, there's things that have to take place like World War Three, Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation. Um, a lot of these different type of prophecies that still got to come to pass. And one prophecy is that the Most High will bring all nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So this is where the climax of World War Three is going to take place. The valley. I mean, the, the battle of Armageddon. As we read about in the book of Revelations, all these nations are going to come into this land. And this is where the most high is going to judge. Or if you know the word Jehoshaphat in the Hebrew, it literally means Yahweh Shapat. OK, Jehoshaphat, it literally means uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Lord's decision, the Lord, the valley of decision. That's what Jehoshaphat means. So the most high is going to make his decision on uh, what's going to take place in this place in the Middle East. All right. We're going to keep reading on. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and have sold a girl for a wine that they might drink. And that's exactly what happened. They took us, sold us for, for harlots. They made our, our boys to become. Um, they made our they made our boys become um, even even raped our our our, our kid are our, our the men. They, ra they was ra ra raping the men, man, but breaking the men, selling the women for wine. Right auctioning us off like that's what it says casting lots for our people this obviously happened verse four yea and what have you to do with me o tyre and zidon and all the coast of palestine 
Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return the recompense upon your own head? Right? Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into your temples, my goodly and pleasant things. The children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold into the Grecians that you might remove them far from their border. Right? And again, this is referring to slavery. Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of Palestine, those are African nations. Okay, the Palestine at the time was referring to the Africans, right? And it says that they took the most high silver and gold and all his pleasant things and the children of Judah and Jerusalem, and they sold us to the Grecians. So these Africans sold us to the so-called white men. And this is the history that we know about, okay? And um, when we was dwelling in West Africa, because that's where we fled into in 70 AD. We fled Jerusalem because obviously the Jews were getting persecuted. So we fled into West Africa. We was dwelling there for a little bit. Then these Africans, these Hamites, rounded, rounded us up and sold us to the Grecians. That's called the transatlantic slave trade, man. All right? Verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. I will sell your sons into the daughters and the daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off. For the Lord has spoken it. Hey, and this is a straight up scripture showing you that, yes, the Most High will have these other nations become our slaves. He just said, because they sold us, they will get sold. All right. Fulfilling the prophecy in Revelation 13 and 9 saying, he that leadeth into captivity Shall I go into captivity? All right, so look, it's scriptural. All right, we're going to get to the point here. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come all you heathen and gather yourselves together round about. They're the cause I mighty ones to come down, O Lord. So the Most High is saying, prepare war, man, among the Gentiles. And that's the spirit that's going out is this spirit of war. Everyone's getting ready for war. It's saying to beat your plowshares and the swords and your pruning hooks into the spears. Meaning, take, forget all the, the plowshearing and the pruning hooks and the agriculture. Forget all the farming. Forget all that, man. Okay, uh, forget your, your, uh, your pharmaceuticals or whatever, you know, these, these people be putting their money into and he said turn it into weapons of war he's saying put all your money and everything into your military that's why these nations is going hella hard to develop different type of nuclear missiles man all right they 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 they, they digging real hard to try to get more uh plutonium and uranium so that they can actually make these so-called nuclear what missiles man this is what's going on in all these all these nations they're no longer caring for Things that are unnecessary, but they carry so that their arsenal can be ready for World War Three. Let the weak say I'm strong, right? Because all these nations who at one point were considered the weak, right? They were getting they was getting bullied by America, right? Like Iran, they couldn't do nothing. Right? They just had to take um, these Americans coming up in their nation and just robbing them. They couldn't really do nothing or say speak up, man. All right, Pakistan. These people are actually coming up against America talking straight crap, right? They're not scared, man. If America if America threatens them, hey, they're going to threaten them back. That's why it says let the weak, those who used to be weak, because America is no longer that that top that top nation that, that can just tell everyone body what to do. No. The Most High has leveled out the playing fields now where everybody has damn near the same military might. Right, everyone's got their nuclear bomb. So there's no one out here that can, okay, threaten one another, man. Now you're, every, America's on the defense now. They're no longer just straight up offense. America's on defense for sure right now, man. All right? It says, assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen. Gather yourselves together round about. They're the cause I mighty wants to come down, O Yahweh. Let the heathen be wakened and come into the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put you in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Come get you down. The press is full and the fats overflow. Their wickedness is great. 
multitudes, multitudes in the valley of the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. So this is ultimately what's going on, man. The Lord is putting in their spirits to get ready to come into this valley decision in the Middle East. This is the valley of Jehoshaphat, right? And how the, is this feat going to be accomplished? All right, the Most High is put it in his prophecies, man. This is the book of Revelations chapter, I believe, 16, and I believe it's going to be 12, right? It says, And the sixth angel poured out the vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So this is literally an angel who's going to, who dried up the river Euphrates so that the kings of the east, and who the kings of the east again? Russia, China, Iran, Germany, um, India, North Korea, uh, Pakistan. These are all the kings of the east. And they're going to use this this um, this this um, river passage, the most high dried up, so that they can all meet easily in the valley of Jehoshaphat, right? And obviously, man, if you look up right now, right, which we've done this before, but um, let's just look this up, right? Rivers Euphrates, my bad. Rivers, river, Euphrates, Euphrates. And uh, we're going to put in dried up. Okay, drying up. See, look at that. This is the river Euphrates right here, man. Just dried up. Right, this used to be a very lush. Okay, this used to be a very, very lush river. Okay, back in the days... Uh, you had the four rivers, I believe, the four heads that you read about in the book of Genesis. I believe it was like the Tigris, um, the Euphrates, um, Slakia. Um, you had two others. I can't really remember. But these used to be lush ocean. I mean, just full. But look at it now, man. Look at all. This is literally the river Euphrates now. Right. And you can't tell me these scriptures aren't real. Right. This is this is something that was prophesied to happen thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago back in the time of john the revelator man when he was on the island of patmos he wrote about this man he saw it and it's happened it's happened man the, the 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 river euphrates is dried up and these these um these kings of the east they're going to use this specific valley to actually meet up into the valley of jehoshaphat into the valley decision to ultimately okay do this judgment right so the most I can judge, it's going to say 13. I saw the unclean spirits of the, like, um, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth and into the earth and of, and of the whole earth to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Right? So guess what? The Most High is going to gather all these people, these kings, into this valley, Jehoshaphat. And this is going to be the battle of Armageddon. The climax, the top battle. This is going to be the climax of World War III. Right. After all hell broke loose, after everything, after all these missiles and everything, well, the ultimate judgment is that this place, America, will be set on fire. Right. Which you really read about in the book of um, book of Revelation, chapter 18. Right. But let me get this in the book of Revelations, chapter 17 and uh, 16. Right. We're going to go through this prophecy pretty much. It says, right. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Right? So these ten horns, again, if you read the book of Revelations, this book is not literal whatsoever. Well, I mean, some of it is literal, but most of it is parabolic. It's similitudes. Right? It's metaphors. Right? And if we understand the understanding on the ten horns, this is only talking about ten kings, ten kingdoms, right? The ten common markets the eu okay the allies of america right such as russia china north korea india pakistan and all of these other uh european unions 
It says that they're going to end up hating the whore. And who's the whore that we read about in, Re in, in Revelations? Babylon the Great. That's the great whore. The abomination of the earth, which is America. So these these nations, these kings of the east, these these ten horns are going to end up hating America, which they do, obviously. Why do you think they're getting re themselves ready to destroy this land? They're going to make her desolate and naked and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And how are they going to burn this place with fire? Is because they're going to use their missiles. You saw how much missiles they had. You saw the power that they was that they was packing, right? And that's not even that's nothing, man. That's just drills. When the real things comes to play, and hey, they're going to bring out their big ass missiles, man, like Satan one, <laughs> Satan two. They're going to bring all these dang missiles out that you've probably never seen before. They say these things can destroy like the a size a, a, a land the size of Texas, right? And if I'm Actually, I do remember if you if I'm correct, let me see this real quick. Right. If I go down here, yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, this is actually I'm just so confident now when I talk to people and you can't stop me from smiling now. Every photo I'm smiling. So lock you. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this because it says North Korea Kim Jong un unveils new nuclear missile during huge parade. And this is what? published October 10th, so this is only like a couple days ago, man. All right, let's read it. Let's watch it. See, man, hey, <laughs> so you got fat boy over here, um, getting himself ready. You got these big ass missiles ready, huh? You know, and this is what America, this is what, why are they getting these things ready? It's so that they can burn this place, America. Let's read that again. And the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts, for the Most High hath put it in their hearts, to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God should be fulfilled. So the Most High is ultimately, at the end of the day, put it into the spirits of these kings to go ahead and do everything they're doing. So guess what? At the end of the day, these kings, they're not doing it of their own will. It's the Most High putting it in their spirits so that they can be used to fulfill prophecy, right? Let's read this. This is a book of Proverbs 21 and 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it with us however he will. So the Most High says that the king's heart, man, the heart of these leaders, man, Vladimir Putin, uh, Kim Jong-un, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, what, what's that dude in Iran? I believe his name was um, Salamani or some, something. I think he's the one who died. Anyways, these these top leaders, man, Trump, the Most High puts it in their spirits to do the things they do. So these wartime acts, these wartime moves, all right, it's the Lord putting these spirits upon them so that they may uh, be directed to actually fulfill the Lord's scriptures. Because the scriptures say certain things and we're all bound by prophecy. You see, we're all bound by prophecy, man. The Most High said that he's going to stir up the meads, like he's going to do it. Right. Why do you think that these um, right now, a lot of these Iranians right, and a lot of these nations are getting mad? Right. 
It's because the Most High is doing that, man. The Most High is doing all that. Right? This is the book of um, Isaiah 13 and 17. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity upon the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And these bows, they're not literal bows, man. These bows are referring to the ICBM nukes, man. These these uh these missiles that they got. These are the modern day bow and arrows that the Lord is um referring to, man. Right? And they're saying that the Medes, who are the Medes today, man? These would be considered your Iranians, right? They the Lord's stirring up their spirit against this place, Babylon the Great. Okay? That's why you see these nations and especially Iran, man, they are they detest America. They literally say we are waiting for the the news of the death of the children of America. They they wait for the day when they hear that this place has just been utterly desolate, destroyed. I mean, just just straight up taken off the map. They say that's going to be the best news they've ever heard. So the Lord, the Lord put it in their spirits for these these Iranians, these Ishmaelites, to hate this place, man. And ultimately, what are they going to do? Verse nineteen. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? So this is what's going to happen to America. We know that's not actual Babylon. We're not. This is not ancient Babylon. Because ancient Babylon never went out like Sodom and Gomorrah went out. That place is still there. So obviously we know that this right here is referring to Babylon the Great. America, because the Most High is going to destroy this place, America, with ICBM nukes, just like Sodom was destroyed with everlasting, eternal fire, as it said, it, that place still has certain rocks and things that are flammable, you know. So the Most High is gonna make it to the point to where this place, it, it's it's gonna be so 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 destroyed. It it tells you in the next verse. I'm gonna just read it. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch their tent there. Neither shall the shepherd make their fold there. And this is concerning America, man. Right? The Most High is going to destroy this place for his sins in World War Three, Right? Let's get this in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and 5. I got a couple more scriptures here. It says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with the burning and fuel of fire. So the Lord is saying, that every battle is usually fought with confused noise, garments rolled in blood. That's your that's your traditional warfare, man. Right? You have air fighter jets in the sky. You have guns, hand to hand combat. You have just uh, different type of grenades going off. It's all type of people yelling. People, it's loud. War is loud, man. When these um, when these um, what do you say? When these tanks blow off and things of this sort, it's it's just confusing, right? Even ancient in the ancient world, you had horses, uh, 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 you had the riders. I mean, everything was just, it was bloody, it was loud. But he said, that's your traditional warfare. He said, this this war that's coming up, but this shall be with the burning and fuel of fire. Meaning, the war we're coming up into, it's not going to be no traditional warfare. It's going to be fought with nuclear missiles, right? The Most High is going to uh, uh, put it... In the spirits for these people to use missiles, they're going to stay in their house, in their, their homes, and they're just going to launch missiles across the globe, right? And this is going to be the the most destructive war mankind has ever seen because the Lord Yahweh Shai says, hey, this, this thing coming up is going to be the worst, the worst, the worst thing you've ever seen. This is, there's never been anything like it. Might as well just get that, right? This is the book of Matthew chapter 24. All right, and 21. So guess what, man? Right, World War One, World War Three, I mean, World War, World War One, World War Two, we will not be able to compare with this one. This is Matthew 24 and 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, nor to this time, nor ever shall be. Except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the Lord is saying that this war, this tribulation, it's not just the World War Three, but we're talking about Jacob's trouble, the hour of temptation, 
I mean, I mean, the famines, the, all these things are going to contribute to this tribulation, ultimately World War Three. So there's going to be nothing that we can ever compare to the time coming up. The Great Depression is not going to compare the Holocaust, so-called Holocaust, World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, anything you can think about will not even come close to the things we're about to see. He said, except those days be shortened, no flesh will live. But for the elect, hey, that day, those days will be shortened, man. That's all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahushah, you know. Now, you know, this is going to be the last scripture I want to bring out. So, look, man, these prophecies are speaking. And as the time, as these days go on, man, hey, you know, you can't ignore it. You cannot, you can't ignore that the scriptures say what it says. And it's correlating, man. It's correlating perfectly with modern day events. It's not some coincidence Hey, this is all being ran by Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua. This is Revelations chapter 11 and 14. The second woe is passed, and behold, the th third woe cometh quickly. So, hey, the second world war is passed, and the third world war, hey, it come quickly. It's coming quick. You know, so, hey, we gotta, you got to repent, man, especially in these days and these times. It's not, to be, it's not time to be bullcrapping. Right, that's why the Lord said, um, okay, this is in the book of Revelations. Okay, chapter 17, and um, I think I want to get um, 16. Let me try that. No, 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 it's locked in. It's going to be Revelations chapter 16 and 13. It says, um, verse 16, Revelation 16, 15, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So the Lord said, hey, he's coming like a thief. You got to watch. The Lord said, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Meaning you are you are diligently keeping yourself away from sin. Because your garments, hey, they represent what you who you are, what you're doing, right? Okay, because you the Lord said, let your garments be white always and let your head lack no ointment. So your garments, they got to be white, meaning that you are not in sin. All right, when you are in sin, you got to repent. But if you if the Lord comes back and you don't got garments on or your garments got all type of stains on it, meaning you wasn't washful, you wasn't diligent, you wasn't you wasn't trying your best to stay in the feet of the Lord. You were sinning and your garments are just probably stripped off of you or they're all stained up. The Lord is not going to be looking at that, man. The Lord said, let your garments be white and your head lack no ointment. That's in Ecclesiastes chapter uh. 9 and 8, right? Let's just, might as well read it. Let thy garments always be white and let thy head lack no women. So make sure that you are spiritually walking in the fear of the Lord, man. That represents your garments. So if your garment is white, that means that you are walking in the ways of righteousness, right? White represents righteousness. Okay, and if you are not in a white garment, but your garment is stained, that's like you being tainted with all type of sin. Meaning you was just not being watchful. You was you was just kind of being a drunkard in these last days, and you was giving heed to seducing spirits, which is not what you need to do. All right, we coming up close, and we see these things happening before our eyes. Therefore, you should be more and more trying your best to uh, to um, to to stay diligent, man. I mean, there's no other way. You want to get mercy from your Yahweh from Yahushua, because you see all these these things happening. Hey, therefore, you should strive to be more on point, man. All right. Like we all we all fall, but hey, you gotta continue on. Alright, so really, man, um with that, that's just a quick article that I wanted to bring out through the spirit of most high. Um hopefully, you know, this thing, you know, it made sense. Hopefully it was uh um edifying, but to the next time I wanna say shalom.